Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you. Here we are. This is a very special uh, edition of Best Teammates because we are live at Shifty Lizard. We have made it. So thank you very much for listening to this special edition. Andy Martin, how are you? I'm very well. Excited to be down here finally. It's taken months. Yeah, it's taken a very long time. Rosie Panetta, you've dressed as a marshmallow again, which is fantastic. It is winter. How are you going? I'm good. I'm very good. I'm glad you said marshmallow. Mm, not what we said off air. Maddie <laughs> Burgess, hello. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, really good. Lee Stone, nice. who looks after Shifty Lizard. Lee, thank you for having us, mate. It's been a long time coming, but it is great to be here on a beautiful evening here in South Australia. Um, we, we wanted to make a special episode so you can tell us about the business, tell us about the history of Shifty Lizard and um, also, you know, give people a bit more awareness of to make the way down to Wollonga if they are living north of Wollonga. So tell us about yourself and tell us about how you got involved in this incredible business, mate. Awesome. Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming down here, guys. Like you said, it's been a little bit of a while, but we finally got there, so it's great to have you here. Um, so, uh, sort of, yeah, I mean, Shifty Lizard has been a bit of a uh, brainchild of mine for a fair few years. I was a bit of a home brewer from an early age. I think um, my old man was sick of me eating, drinking his West End drafts, so he sort of got me a Cooper's uh, kit and away I went. So, I sort of led on to, I, I, I moved over to the UK back in 2006, um, and then when I got over there, I actually got into the beer industry. So, I kind of kept on home brewing. Um, ended up working for sort of the big breweries like uh, CUK um, and, you know, well, CUB and Heineken and Foster's and doing all that stuff. So essentially I was a beer technician, which is everything it's, uh, it should be. It was testing bubbles, continuously making sure the beer was right. Um, but we used to run around the UK kind of installing beer equipment into pubs and, and clubs and all that kind of stuff. So sort of my, my enthusiasm for beer just sort of excelled from that point. Um, I did that for about eight and a half years, and, and then eventually I kind of uh, came back. I ended up, uh, you know, doing what I needed to do over there. Well, essentially it was meant to be two years in the UK, and it turned out to be eight and a half years, so I didn't really go to plan. Um, but then I got back to Australia and just sort of, you know, went headfirst into starting a brewery. Um, Started it back in 2016. We were legally selling beer to people. Um, <laughs> it's a very sudden thing to okay, do to so sell illegal things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think my dad was glad that I sort of changed the shed into a brewery rather than some of the yeah, um, narcotics I was trying to do in there before. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it is also very southern of you to do that. Yeah, 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 got rid yeah. of the pot, well, got the beer in. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm from the hub, so what do you expect? <laughs> Um, yeah. Aberfoyle Park represent. Yeah, yeah that is awesome. Um, so <laughs> I, I guess the, the, we can talk about the, the timeline and the other guys will ask some questions as well. But yep. the, the craft beer scene in Adelaide is growing at a rapid rate. I'm going to ask some pretty naive questions, okay, because I'm a naive person. So the first thing I want to ask is beer in cans. It's made a resurgence. It is back. Yep. Um, there's cans. There's bottles. But... I feel now, after having a little bit to do with um, a friend of mine who used to work, uh, Lion Nathan, and yep. now he's um, doing some consulting with another brewery, yep. the cans are a really important part about selling your beer yep. because it's about what it looks like as fridge space as you go to a place which sells a lot of them. Is that something you pride yourself in? Oh, for sure. I mean, we were doing bottles um, kind of beer right up until just recently. We. We sort of merged over the can, and it's a bit of a hard one. It's very expensive sort of do canning and that, so it's um, a lot of investment, but we've finally got there. The bottles were letting in about 10% sort of oxygen over a course of a, a year, um, so it was oxidising the beer. What does that do? What does that it mean? It loses yeah. flavour, essentially. Okay. Yeah, so the, the beer sort of, once the oxygen gets in there, it starts to kind of make it um, go, sort of go off a little bit and lose that flavour, really, you know, dulls it. Um, cans just hold that. There's a, there's like a minor trace of oxygen that generally gets into the can. So um, if you had a preference, would it be 
the bottle, or the can. can. Oh yeah, yeah. Any day of the week, yeah. I mean, it's just so much fresher, and they've sort of developed the cans. They used to be just more of aluminium, and though beer and cider and that used to kind of deteriorate the inside of the can over yeah. time. Um, so you would get metals and stuff, which are not good for the um, beer. It would you know so. They've kind of got a bit more of a coating on there, um, sort of protects everything that goes into the can. Um, it protects it from light, so you see all craft beer or ales essentially have brown bottles, um, so it kind of protects that light getting through uh, the bottle. Yeah. Um, whereas lagers, they're, they're kind of more pasteurized than that, and they've got you know they're, they're a lot more protected. The lager sort of yeast um, helps protect it, so they don't really need that dark bottle. Um, but with the ales, you know, having that can and fully protecting it is just makes it last. The shelf life is just so much longer. What was it like the first time you brewed a shifty lizard beer? Like that first bottle that you've it can you made? Shit. Really? <laughs> it was kind of like our first podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey. and, and maybe the second I mean, and third, but by the fourth. Yeah, exploding bottles is where, kind of where it starts. If you don't have an exploding wow. bottle, then have you really brewed beer? So did um, you start at home? Is yep. that where it sort of kicked off? Yeah, uh, yep, yep, yep. in, the, in the lab that I used to call it back in the day, and that sort of then, uh, yeah, we kind of sort of was allowed to call it the brewery once I moved everything out there that I was trying to grow. So, yep. um it was, uh, yeah, so exploding bottles. One of the things is when you got the crown seal cap on a bottle, I actually opened one one time and it's like burst off, shot right into my neck and I had like the engraving oh of God. the actual... Oh, yeah. Very southern of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that why you got a cat there to cover and it up? And then I literally just necked the rest of the bottles. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. How very hub of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was in year eight. <laughs> <laughs> so what's awesome. it like with, um, with craft beer? I, I find now there's... There's a lot of options yep. around South Australia. We're talking specifically, and I think um, I, I, I drink a lot of wine, so I'm using wine as an example here. I think yep. there's a, a misconception, and also with gin, that people see success and they think it's done overnight, and they're like, oh, we can do this, but they forget the hard work, the oh. commitment, the dedication, the... Um, the trial and error that goes into it as well. So it's not as easy as going, I want to do this and let's start selling things tomorrow. Is that a yep. misconception out in the market, though, that people think they can just go buy a kit from Kmart and then start being successful? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you know, everybody thinks they can become a brewer and they generally get through the first exploding bottles before they're like, no, nah, I can't really be bothered with it anymore. And so they give it up. I mean, you know, it really just kind of, you know, my, my interest just grew from, like, how can I control fermentation? How can I sort of get that right bitterness? in the actual beer and, and the desired colour and the desired alcohol and everything in it. So it really interests me. So I just did research and just kind of YouTube is your best friend when you come into it. There's a lot of like um, craft beer um, brewing shows and that from America that you sort of watch. And then um, you, you kind of just keep going with that. I mean, it's such a craft now and everyone's sort of trying to pick it up and get involved because it's a, it's a way to express yourself like a cook you know, will put out one of their finest dish and they get to see the people enjoy it and the feedback of it and it's sort of the same. You know, you see your beers all over social media and you kind of, you know, you rock up to a, a restaurant and you see people just sitting there sort of sipping your beers and you're like, well, that's what I sort of created there and it's, it's pretty humbling, yeah. What's the beer that, that speaks to you the most then? What's, what's, uh, the, what's the one beer that says this is Shifty Lizard? Oh, if, the one if it beer. defines you and your vibe. Um, I, I suppose the English IPA. Mainly because I spend so much time over yeah. in England and enjoying those flavours and drinking the traditional ales, you know, the warmer sort of ales that they drink there. Um, so I sort of developed this recipe to try and get that bitterness and try and get that malty depth to it um, and just get that balanced flavour. I was going to ask, the, the warm beer thing is real. Yeah, 100%. Like, they, they, they purposely drink beer yep. warm. Yep, yep. And would you? It. Would you now yeah, back here Yeah, but then they also have Foster's Super Chilled on tap, so I don't really okay. get what they We got rid of that because we thought it was piss. So, so if, we, went, yeah. should we, if yeah. we want to try the English IPA that we said, yep. should we drink that warm? Sorry? Should we drink it warm? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. I mean, so people, when they come in here, even our stouts, so they'll buy a pint of stout and they'll buy sort of one of our other drinks and they'll leave the stout there for sort of half an hour while they drink the other one just to let it warm up, come to sort of just under room temperature because it sort of pronounces that flavour a little bit more. Um, it's just like, you know, pairing it with food. You eat a spicy dish and you drink a, an IPA with all that sort of hop flavour in there, it like makes it sort of spicier and it brings out all those sort of flavours. So we do a lot of beer degustations where, you know, we'll have six course meals and we'll pair one of our beers with each of the meals um, and then you sort of go through it and you can see what the actual 
what, what flavours you're getting out of the meal yeah, based right. on what the beer's doing to your palate. So. I'm, I'm looking at you right behind you was a sign that says um, half price wings, so um, you're selling me. Just relax, far out. Yeah, come on the right day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, we were lucky enough to try some of the, the Shifty Lizard beers. Um, you gave us a couple of different sorts and we drank them that one famous night in the Oscast studios. Um, well, we drank two and Andy drank the rest. That's right, yeah. Exactly. They were fantastic. I'm just saying, guys, yeah. they were fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and I stick by it. This is probably the most naive question you'll ever ever have to answer, but when it comes to new flavours, uh, is that calculated or do you just throw some shit in there and just see what it tastes like and it works and if not, you don't try that again? <laughs> um, it's calculated now. I think my hub days, I would just throw the shit in there and see how it came out, but it's certainly refined now. You know, I, I when it comes to the actual style, I do some investigation. I mean, they do a lot of judging so you can get your beer guides there which sort of tells you what sort of mouthfeel you're meant to be getting the aroma so you know when we dry hop the beer so when I explain to you guys out there about the process when it's in the fermenter towards the end after the yeast has done a lot of its job you can dry hop it so that's adding all that hops in there at the end um, which is during the sort of the cold um, uh, brew of it and where it's like once the hops sort of hit it it brings out more aroma you get a lot more mouthfeel rather than less less bitterness so you know when you do it you're sort of like how many how much dry hop am I going to do on it at what point during that 60 minute boil am I going to put these hops in there um so yeah you know it's just sort of done properly so what you're saying is it's not just a a Carlton dry with a uh, two litre of golden circle dumped in it (laughs) but that would be fantastic I'm sure I've got um I've got uh, two controversial questions yes. because we're friends and uh, I would say uh, family maybe three controversial questions so the first one um uh, the there's a there's this thing going around South Australia right when we talk about some other places that brew beer so I'm going to use the example of Big Shed I'm going to use the example of Pirate Life yep. so that's my my neck of the woods right as soon as people start talking about Big Shed everyone goes yeah it's local awesome well done as soon as people start talking about Pirate Life they go oh you sold out whatever. I'm kind of in the mind of if if a big corporation wants to purchase uh, and invest in your brewery, but you get some sort of creative control, that's a great business decision. Like, that should be the goal, shouldn't it? Instead of... um you don't sell out. You're just doing kind of like what business is designed for. What What, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, um, it? Again, yeah, very controversial. I mean, I yeah. think you speak to the, the, the really loyal craft beer drinkers that are drinking sort of like, you know, SA beers only would sort of say that they were full sellouts. And I think, yeah. you know, they were bought by a fairly sizable business, which isn't actually yes. Australian owned. You know, this then goes over. And so the money that we're putting into their pockets is going into sort of an international company. Yep. Um, so that's where I think people will get their um, backs up about it because you know when when you sell out I mean you've got places like um, Vale Brewery and we were brewing with them for a bit and they got sold out to Bigfoots but Bigfoots is still South Australia yeah, yeah. You know, so people don't really see that as a major sell out yep. you know they've um, they've done the wrong thing whereas with Pirate Life you know but they had a, they had a great business plan like they they right from the start could guarantee you you know MC and Red and Jack and that went in there going let's just build this business massively in the first three years yeah, yeah, yeah. and then once they come knocking on our door we'll see how much we can sort of get for it because they sort of took on major investments so their shareholder was actually fairly small Mm. Um, and and this is sort of everything I've heard it's probably a little bit of speculation as well but they sort of went in there going well let's get as much investment let's build this to a ridiculous size and then let's see how much we can sort of get for it and then turn it over within three years which is I think was a massive massively great effort so Mm. you know I kind of commend them for it Um, me personally what I want to sort of do is um, I want to be able to have a legacy I sort of want to be able to pass this brewery on to my family and go through generations a little bit like Cooper's mm. um, which is sort of ironic as well because my um, my fiance is part of the Cooper's family you Glenn know, Cooper is your fiance yeah Glenn yeah Cooper. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A beautiful couple. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Beautiful wife, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I actually compare you in a music sense. You're uh, you're very much a Chance the Rapper. That, yep. um, ha- oh, thank you. Had the opportunity oh, to throw down a, a beat that's, as well. That's, yeah. that's his LeBron James. So that is <laughs> wrong, <laughs> <laughs> wow. nah, but, but using that example of... 
a lot of artists um, go into the music industry with the intention of being signed to a major label straight away. But yep. Chance the Rapper said, no, 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 I'm going to do it my own way. Yep. And eventually he's built his fortune through that. I'm going to get through my two other controversial questions quickly so the other guys can ask some <laughs> questions. Um, I'm really nervous about asking this. Uh, the Lizard? Mm. Uh, Which one? The, the dead one. Oh, no. What dead lizard? Yeah. What are you Too talking soon. about? Yeah, no. yeah the Too one soon. that passed, I think, is probably the <laughs> best. Um, yeah. term. Is that the point? Is this... Is this probably yeah, named after a dead lizard? Yeah. Oh my god, Rosie. What did you see Rosie under the bar? Far out. <laughs> did you see the little, um, the, the area under the bar for a lizard? lizard? The tank there? Yeah, yeah, that's a fake lizard in there. I, didn't, I was looking at the beer, I didn't look down. Oh my god. Oh, well, it's the first time you haven't looked down. Damn it! Uh, sorry, so that was obviously iconic and, yeah. um, uh, well, is it is it that lizard which features in a lot of the artwork as well? or is this uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, a lot of them, I think, have been found online and just kind yeah, of yeah, photoshopped yeah. in, like, hugging a beer, which is the chameleon, because I don't even think we're allowed to have them in Australia. But, the um, yeah, so Aurora was our sort of um, our resident lizard that mm. we had here and was uh, a few years on and um, sort of off the back of COVID, sort of got unwell one weekend, um, which was really unusual. And we sort of put it down that we think it might have been to do with the sanitizer. Because oh, you yeah, get right. her out of the tank, you know, and you hold her in your oh, hands, and no. she sort of likes to sort of lick stuff, and that's how you know with her senses. That's a bit like Rosie, and, yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is that, is that you're in there right now. Hey, no, she's dead. Rosie, I hope Rosie, not. I hope not. Rosie, stop. We should have briefed you beforehand. Okay, I'm moving on to the next question. <laughs> oh my god, I'm well, sorry. We may get another say? lizard. We nah, may so, get another lizard. Okay, though. so the next question is what I've what I've loved about our correspondence with you guys is that you're not in it to go. We're not in it for the glory or anything like that you actually want an, an organic feeling with anything that you do so we we still sit around our podcast and go we don't know why you guys want anything to do with us because we're such a random podcast and stuff so thank you for that but what what's actually made you go no we no. want to be involved with you guys <laughs> i don't know either to be fair. <laughs> good answer That's a great answer yeah. <laughs> no, all no. i can say though is that the brewski Perfect beer for the podcast. Oh, thank you. It's been sensational in Ozcast and in my mouth. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I wouldn't mind one. Right now. <laughs> Is that a hint to get you another beer? Or? I mean, well, you know, well, what are we drinking? Uh, we drinking the same thing right now. Did you serve us all the same thing? Yep. Yeah. So, how how could people find you uh, if they want to go around? It's not just here that obviously you sell your drinks. I want people yeah. to go. How do they find you on social media? Um, how do they get involved? Um, so uh, shiftylizard.com, um, shifty.lizard.brewery, I think it is, on Instagram. I think we've even got a TikTok thing going on. Great. Which, you know, I think uh, uh, Danny's, Andy set you uh, Danny's up? daughter yeah. probably runs that, for all I know. Only <laughs> 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 oh. yeah. no, not the, no, I'm just saying. Do you guys have any other questions no, before? I just, I'm down, like, I just had spied the outdoor area. I'm guessing on the weekends, this is pumping. It looks yeah, lovely out there. Pumping. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going, we're going to be working on that as well, actually, soon. So we should have a new yeah. kind of. This uh, is the main street of Old Wollonga, Wollonga. Wollonga. This is Wollonga. Rosie, you've done no Wollonga. research yeah. coming down here. No, I. Th- there's there is old no Wollonga lizard and in the Wollonga. tank. Oh, God, I didn't look down there, but no, I'm guessing. <laughs> what do you mean by good, that? Yeah. I don't know. I just. I don't know why I turn up. I don't know Can why I, I talk. Oh God. <laughs> what am I here? Can I have a look now? <laughs> look down now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what though? Like after hearing after hearing all that from Lee, it's actually hard to believe you went to the hub. It's one, yeah. probably yeah. one of the better products to come out of there. Well, I mean that, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, um, uh, yeah, that is the thing. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. No more no, beers for Andy. We're, we're, we're blessed with you know a beer technician and a uh, petrol forecourt operator. So hey, look, yeah, whatever you want me to be, I will be <laughs> uh, mountain bike rider, whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, what was this place when you moved in? Uh, it was a butcher. Which, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, meat and small goods place. So we actually had, like, you know, fridges all out here. So it took about four months. So I did most of the renovations and that here. Wow. I built the bar. Um, I built all the toilets and everything like that. So it was about a four-month sort Rosie of... Rosie um, tested ball. the toilet before. She said it was spot on. It was good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The bowl was... You could eat out of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. didn't, didn't try that. I mean, I respect you, but I'm going to decline that offer. Yeah. <laughs> it was more of a delivery rather than a... Uh, uh, wanting to eat something, but it's a long drive, guys. <laughs> oh, we could smell it. Um, all right, Lee, thank you very much for having us, mate. Um, this has been great. So we'll put all the information about Shifty Lizard in the uh, the bio and the, the show notes of this. But mate, it's it's actually really good to make our way here and just hang out here. So mate, you having a look around? It's packed here at the moment, which is awesome. Doing all right. Thank you very much for coming out. Love yeah, it. no worries. Cheers. Hi. 
Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you.